Hello and welcome back to The Wellness Check. Today I wanted to do a video that might turn into a series regarding information, education on narcissism, gaslighting, what it's like to be a partner or a child of a parent who has narcissism, and some signs to look for should you be asking yourself, I wonder what's going on here. So today we're going to be talking about the 10 questions to ask yourself, am I being gaslit? Is the person around me gaslighting me or others? Here are some ways maybe to begin to sort that out. So the first question we're going to ask today is, has your partner told you that people close to you have said bad things about you? This is maybe more of a sneaky, covert way of putting a wedge between you and your social support system, your friends, your family, and it sounds something like this. Oh my gosh, did you hear that so-and-so said this about you? I was at work the other day and I heard him talking and that's what he said about you. Did you know that's how he feels? about you, or can you believe that he said that about you? It's probably fair to say that the statement was never made, but if it was made by this individual, a narcissist or a person who's trying to gaslight will hop on top of that as an opportunity to put a wedge in between you and that person. So maybe your feelings are really hurt. It's likely that the person who's saying this to you is also very keen to what does hurt your feelings and knows exactly what to say to kind of get you below the belt and hurt you in the most direct way possible. So the thing that was said by the person, the other person that was apparently trying to say bad things about you, it's going to feel very personal and it's going to be something enough to either make you mad or sad or have some sort of reaction in hopes that you'll be upset with this person or avoid them or have a confrontation. And now this person is not in your social support circle anymore. So that's usually something we see with narcissists. Um, there are many types of narcissists out there and maybe I'll do another video on that. But one goal is to get you away from your friends, your close people in your life so that you have to kind of rely and be codependent on the narcissist, him or herself. Um, so this is a really effective way at doing it. Okay. Number two, a second question is, do you find that items of great value or sentimentality go missing in your home with no explanation? This question I love because it's another kind of covert, sneaky kind of back door way to make you wonder what's going on. Did I misplace something? I swear I put the keys on this table. Where did they go? Or I swear I put that my grandmother's bracelet in my jewelry box in the closet. Why can't I find it? And that's, an, that's another opportunity for the gaslighter or the narcissist to say, what? What are you talking about? Um, you put it on the entryway table or you never had grandma's bracelet. She would have never given that to you. What? Something enough to convince you to make you feel like you did maybe misplace something or um, if you're very certain that you put it somewhere and then the gaslighter comes in and says, no, you sure didn't. What You never put it there. I've never seen it there. It's just something to kind of stir up the water a little bit, make you second guess yourself. Um, and it leaves you kind of pondering for the rest of the day. I really thought I put it in the jewelry box in the closet, that bracelet. And we've seen multiple, multiple times that a gaslighter will even go so far as to remove the thing or put the thing in a different place. So maybe you did put grandma's bracelet in the jewelry box in the closet and he heard you or she heard you talking about wanting to wear that to a weekend event. That's an opportunity for a gaslighter to say, she's going to be looking for that. I'm going to remove that bracelet. I'm going to put it somewhere else so that she can be really unsure about herself. So there's always some sort of personal gain when it comes to a gaslighter and a narcissist. 
um, to create a codependent relationship, to create a need for, and a lot of times that comes out in these really sneaky ways that we, you know, on the receiving end, just see it as, I, are you sure? Like, I really feel like I put it there. It's just an opportunity to be put down or to, um, in one way or another, maybe chastise us for getting it wrong or doing something wrong. A third question, has your partner turned your children against you or undermined your parenting? This one is really obvious, um, and I see it a lot in family dynamics. It's another attempt at splitting. Okay, so splitting, again, like one of the previous questions we talked about, is getting you away from. So if you have a very solid relationship with your son or your daughter, a narcissist or someone that's gaslighting you is going to be stepping in and messing all of that up to try and remove the closeness and the security of that attachment, of that relationship. It, it makes somebody that has gaslighting tendencies or narcissistic tendencies uncomfortable to see that their partner is, is close and has a happy, healthy relationship with anybody else. So it's often in the home where you guys are spending a lot of time together that you'll see really obvious and hurtful jabs about your parenting, maybe even a lot of name calling in front of the child or falsifying stories to make them look better and you look worse. Again, a lot of attempts for second guessing yourself as a parent. Um, and then even kind of behind the scenes, what we'll see is in addition to the splitting between you and the child, they will have private conversations with the kid, depending on the age level and, and what that looks like, but uh, splitting even more. So you know your mother or you know your father, gosh, they just can't get it together. I am so sorry she disappointed you again. That must, you know what I mean? That kind of language to influence a child, an adolescent, whatever it is, um, in that family structure to make the receiver look incompetent, to have blame or fault or not be able to do things correctly. So we'll see that a lot in gaslighting too. All right, the fourth question is, has your partner told you that what you saw or heard isn't really what's happening? Okay, so now you can kind of start to see the overlap of patterns within a gaslighter. This is maybe one of the most common issues that we see. And it's it's this constant like, are you sure that that happened? I don't think it happened that way. Um, and they're very convincing, very, very convincing. It, to be truthful, no one is immune to being gaslit. No one is really able to just kind of say, I can outsmart a gaslighter. I could sniff them from a mile away. They could never, they could never trick me. Well, the truth is, is that they are extremely talented and bright and smart and they know what they're doing and they know exactly how to titrate that manipulation and that gaslighting specifically to you. So in conversation, um, maybe, maybe there was an argument in the home and you guys are recapping the argument and you're saying, well, when you said this and he, and the person might interrupt and say, whoa, 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 I didn't say that. What I said was this. And actually that's not true. It's just a way to twist it. It's either a way to twist it to get the gaslighter narcissist off the hook to make them look blameless, or it's a way to place blame onto you but it's not actual reality. It didn't actually happen that way. It's a manipulation tactic, okay? So what you saw, what you heard, what you said isn't your reality. This is also what we see as maybe some of the most damaging thing that happens in a relationship. It leaves the receiver on the other end just feeling very confused, very uncertain, very reliant, with time on that individual to tell him or her how they should feel, what did happen, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So the fifth question, did your relationship start off very intensely followed by a steep drop in your partner's approval? 
This is the last question we're gonna do and I'll do a separate video part two for the next five questions. When I talk to my clients about their experience in the courtship phase of dating someone who they now know has narcissistic tendencies uh, or has been gaslighting, this pattern is almost identical every single time. And it's the story of a very enchanting courtship. They're, the presentation of a narcissist tends to be to the outward public, at least m most of the time, very gregarious, very outgoing. They could be described as funny or dutiful to the public, you know, very engaged in community efforts, life of the party, that kind of energy, right? So you guys are discussing likes and dislikes, getting to know one another better, and you find that what he likes, you like, and what you like, he likes, etc., etc. And things just mesh. The sparks are flying. There, you guys have so much in common. There's a lot of effort put in the beginning of these relationships. And unfortunately, we, we're not seeing it for what it really is in the beginning because it seems very genuine. But it is an attempt to really gain your trust, bring you close, so that it's really hard to walk away when things change. But they do. They change. Sometimes it changes right after they uh, a couple gets married. Sometimes it's after they move in with one another. It's typically after some sort of leverage has happened where now it's harder to get out of the situation. And the truth is a narcissist and someone who's gaslighting doesn't want to have to keep finding new fresh meat, so to speak. They want to be able to um, have someone very close to them that they can manipulate and trust and hold right where they want next to them instead of flippantly having to find someone new, someone new. So all of this is very strategized and it makes it hard, extremely emotionally difficult for someone in this committed relationship on the receiving end to figure out what to do. And oftentimes it takes years and years and maybe even decades to realize that something is not right. I'm not happy. I'm not well. I'm sick. Um, that's when people start coming to therapy and we start talking about what's going on. How are you feeling? What, what is your relationship like? And we begin to uncover these patterns. So these are the first five of a set of 10 questions on what does gaslighting look like in a relationship? And again, this can be parent-child, this can be sibling, this can be even friendship, or it can be an intimate relationship like a partnership. So I hope that this is starting to maybe percolate a little bit. If you are going through something like this or a loved one is going through something like this, share these questions with them. Let them know that they're not crazy, they're not stupid, there's nothing wrong with them at all, but they might be under the influence of someone who has narcissistic tendencies and who is gas. Stay tuned for part two, where I will answer the second of the 10 questions, the last five, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. And again, just thank you for checking in with your wellness. I'll see you soon.